Okay, I want to tell you about um, Gauss's law and concentric shells, how you handle problems that involve concentric shells. Um, one of the big things is just trying to figure out the setup that's being described. So let me um, describe this setup. These aren't circles, these are spheres. Um, and it's, it's basically two spheres. You got a solid sphere of metal that is um, a radius A, that's a radius A, and it's charged up Q, and the net charge on it is Q. And then you have um, some ear, air, right in here, where that's an insulator. And um, don't, don't ask me how this is being suspended in there. Um, we'll, we'll maybe, uh, we'll figure that out at a later time, but it's just like hovering in there. And then um, it's inside another sphere. Now this is a hollow sphere. But it's got the wall of the sphere has some thickness. So there's the metal. So that's um, the the thickness of the outer sphere. Now the inner wall of the outer sphere is B, and the outer wall of the sphere is C. And um, we have to keep in mind that these are spheres now. All right. So. Um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to um, take and ground the outside of this. We're going to touch this with a grounding wire. And what that will do is it will um, it will um, cause the charges to redistribute on here. And so um, let me explain. If this is positive Q, then it's going to pull in some some charge, some negative Q here. So we can expect there to be um, some negative Q right here on the inside. And um, not only that, but um, then if I gr you'd think that there'd be positive Q on this outer side, on the outer surface, but if I ground that, if I attach a ground there, electrons will come up and negate that. And so there'll be no net charge on the outer sphere because it gets it gets um, the electrons will come up and negate all this positive charge. So again, what I did was I grounded the outer part, and that caused there to be no charge here. There's no charge on the outer part, but on the inner side, there's still the negatives that are being pulled in by the positive Q. All right. So um, let's see. Let's find out what the electric field will be at all these locations. Let's find the electric field at um, a distance that's less than A away. Okay, well, the electric field at um, R is less than A is going to be, um, since you're in the metal, that has to equal zero. So at R equals less than A, the electric field is equal to zero um, because it's inside the metal. And any metal that's in equilibrium it has no field in it. So don't have to apply Gauss's law. We just know because um, this is inside the metal. Okay, then um, let's find what the electric field is at where between here, like right here. What's the electric field in that region? So we'd like to find the electric field um, at, um, let's see, R is greater than A, but less than B. I'd like to find it at R is greater than A, but less than B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Gaussian surface. It's going to be a spherical surface. It's going to be like that. And I'm going to apply Gauss's law. So let's see. I'll go Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to the closed surface integral of E dot dA. Remember, two ways to find the the flux through a closed surface is this way and this way. These are two ways to find the, the net flux through a closed surface. Well, the net charge enclosed is Q. That's all the charge that's enclosed. And then over epsilon naught. So I'm done with the left side.
Now the right side, um, if you look, E is outward. E is going this way. And the DAs are outward too. So if I snuck in there and looked at a DA, it's going normally outward. The DAs that make up the Gaussian surface. Remember, this is the E on the Gaussian surface and the DA of the Gaussian surface. And so um, I can get rid of the dot product because E and DA are in the same direction. I can also pull the E out of the integral because um, E is the same amount at each point on this Gaussian surface. And so when I pull the E out, I'm basically just summing up all the DAs. And so I have E equals, when I sum up all the DAs with the integral, 4 pi times R squared where r is the distance from the center all the way to the Gaussian surface. So the electric field is um, going to be q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. That's the same as for a point charge. So when, when you're out here, it's, it's the same as if this were just a point charge at, just right at the origin, right at the center. Okay. Um, now, let's see if we can't find the electric field at the next location, which, which is um, right in the metal. Okay, so the electric field inside here, right here, remember there's a charge Q here. The electric field is um, at um, R is greater than B but less than C, so in somewhere in that region, the electric field has to be, um, that's what we're after, and that has to be equal to zero. And that's because it's in the metal. Because inside metal, E is zero. If it weren't zero, the charges wouldn't be in equilibrium. They'd be moving around. Remember, remember our argument for that? All right, so we know that. And then um, how about outside? How about where, what about E when you're at um, R is greater than C? R is greater than C. No, R is great, greater than C. <coughs> Excuse me. So out here, and so um, if you draw and if you put in a Gaussian surface out there, the charge enclosed. Let's see what it is. Um, the ch total charge enclosed is is going to be. Um, let's see. We have since we we have Q here and negative Q here. And so um, that's going to be the total charge enclosed is zero over epsilon naught is equal to the net flux. So since there's no charge enclosed, there can't be any flux through this surface. And since there's no flux through this surface, there can't be any E there. So E is equal to zero out there when you're out of distance there. Okay. Um, they're also going to ask you um, how you know what the charge is uh, on the inner surface. I'm telling you that it's negative Q, but let me show you the proof of that. If I were to draw a Gaussian surface here, see that Gaussian surface in there? Right inside the metal? There can't be any flux through that Gaussian surface, the one I'm pointing to, because there's no E there. So like if you do E dot DA at every point on this Gaussian surface, since there's no E, there's no flux. Well, if there's no flux, that means that this side of the equation is zero. That's a big zero. So that also means that Q enclosed over epsilon naught is zero. So what can be the, what has to be the net charge enclosed? It has to be negative Q. So those are going to be exactly equal in magnitude, but opposite in charge. Okay, I'm going to need one more video for this, for this one. All right, see you in a bit.